Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place, West of Loathing. Kind of meandered a little bit on the last episode, but I'm okay with that. Because I think, uh, you know, I want to experience as much as the game has to offer. I mean, just look at how busy our map is. There's a couple of open spots here that maybe we haven't uh, seen, and we're filling in the middle as well. But let's deliver the letter to Mr. Bean. Your El Vibrato device starts bleeping, and the bleeping leads you to an unremarkable sand dune, which quickly becomes remarkable when the robot buried underneath it wakes up. Approach it. He has 138 HP. This is like a new world. We have seven action points. So I'm gonna stat up. We still have five action points. And even this only costs three. So we could have done something else even. Um, it would be cool if this gave me three vibrato scraps. I doubt it will, but it would be cool if it did. That way we could start to move further on what I'm assuming is like the pseudo main quest. This guy's dead, by the way. If he wasn't dead to the damage, he was dead to the poison. Got two El Vibrato scraps and 50 experience. That's fine. Next El Vibrato uh, combat that we have will will work for us then. Uh, by the way, I recognize we got this lightning bolt that never disappears here. We'll, we'll have to reset our game in between the next couple episodes. Roy must prefer to perform his morning ablutions outdoors. Perform some of your own. You've gained five experience. We flushed, and we're already a master of flushing them. Pulling your strings. Howdy there, Pilgrim. Name's Roy Bean. Howdy, Roy. I'm no North Thurnley, and what do you do here? Well, when I first came to these parts, I was all about two things. Dispensing justice and dispensing jelly beans. I was the biggest name in bounty hunting and candy sound anyone ever heard of. Gosh, what happened? Oh, nothing particularly tragic. Got old is all. Hung up me pistol for good. I still sell some jelly beans from time to time, but they're out of fashion. This old place is just a jelly bean museum now. Uh, I found this letter addressed to you. A letter? You hand over the letter. He opens it, reads it, snorts derisively, and then tosses it into the fireplace behind him. Thanks anyway. For a jelly bean museum, I sure don't see many jelly beans. Huh, bunch of crooks and shady characters stole them. All three jars. Suppose they think I'm a soft target now that I'm retired. Oh, that sucks. I'll help you get them back. You go to complete a quest, you get a quest, uh, you sing the songs that remind us of the good times, etc, etc. Well now, I certainly appreciate the assistance. Can't offer much in the way of reward. But I can tell you which way the first group of thieves went if you happen out that direction. Also, I will... Dude, there's non-stop spittoons. This lack of jelly beans is not for sale. For sale. There's a single yellow jelly bean in this case with a sign that says Paraguayan Murdubee Honey Jelly Bean. Very rare, 6,000 meat. What kind of lunatic would pay 6,000 meat for a single jelly bean? Well, not me, because I never sell anything, apparently. As soon as you get near the spittoon, you can smell the overpoweringly sweet stench it exudes. Nauseatingly sweet, like the rotting corpse of a dead gummy bear. Look inside. Garish rainbow colors swirl together in congealing psychedelic madness. Is Roy using jelly beans as chewing tobacco? Yes. Yes, of course he is. Investigate further. We're talking about a bowl of jelly beans that have been sucked on, half-chewed, and then spat into a brass bucket. Do you seriously want to put your hand in that swill of artificial coloring and thickened saliva? It'll probably never be clean again. Go for it. Look, I'm serious. You're about to permanently dye your hand with a swirling mishmash of all the worst colors in the spectrum. No one will ever have a tattoo that looks as gross or as stupid. Give it to me. Well, I tried. Don't say I didn't ever warn you. You plunge your hand into the spittoon and fish around for a while. Eventually, you pull out a really disgusting pistol and a really disgusting hand to shoot it with. Spittoon hand. Ooh, dude! Your hand has been permanently stained by the rainbow-colored contents of a nasty spittoon. On the bright side, that hand will never suffer anything that worse, anything worse than that ever again. We got some pretty solid resistances there. Plus, a new stench pistol? Deals stench damage instead of physical, plus 6 moxie, and 13 to 17 damage. It's actually just like 10 times better than our pistol at doing exactly the same thing. Alright, let's catch these jelly thieves. A shot rings out, and you duck just in time to avoid your hat being ruined. A skeleton is standing in the road ahead, arms akimbo, hands just over his holster, ready for another quick draw. Oh, he is also literally on fire. I almost forgot to mention that. Oh, dude. If you thought I was a bad dude before, just you wait, buddy. 
I got a pistol that's like three times more damaging than the one I was previously using. But your moxie stat is 41! That's crazy talk. Why is he not poisoned? Is it because he is immune to poison? Or is it because we don't do poison damage with this thing? Perhaps our toilet pistol is actually not that good. Or sorry, our befouled pistol. I gotta go check. Because we got that lapel that like triples our damage. Uh, from poison, I should say. Character. Oh, no, no, no. Inventory. It's red hot. I can't take it anymore. Okay, red hot pistol. Toilet pistol. Applies five poison to enemies. So still, actually, the befouled pistol is worse because we apply 15 poison uh, per attack. You approach the bandit seated around the fire. The meanest looking one speaks up. Dunno who you think you are, stranger, but you better turn yourself right around and head back the way you came, less than you wanna eat lead. Well, that's not very neighborly. Take a hike, neighbor. You fellas store a jar of jelly beans from an old man and I aim to have them back. Oh, is that right? And just how are you planning on doing that? Uh, with dynamite. Ruthless plus dynamite. Without a word, you pull a stick of dynamite out of your back pocket and toss it onto the bandit's campfire, blowing the five of them to smithereens. Shouldn't have stolen that candy. Well, that's one way to kill five enemies. I'm... Yes, I am walking into every cactus with the hopes that one of them is a lady I can introduce to Cactus Bill. A filthy bedroll. It's the missing beans. Grab them. Mint Mint Jelly Beans. It's a big jar of green jelly beans that are in excellent condition. Judge Roy Bean will be excited to get them back. Got soda crackers crackers, and uh, jellied escargot. Wow. Kurtz fit headband, 164 meat, nails, wine, and tooth powder. Um, it's muscle, right? Oh, speed and maximum uh, HP. But I, I like the sloppy top hat, dude. It's good for moxie. It's a sealed crate. We got 10 dynamite? These guys are idiots then. Nail, tequila, and meats, and a clean bed. All right, well, that's one way to do it. So I think we finally got a quest done over the course of an episode. Instead of actually just opening up like 10 quests in the middle. You find a crate lying at the side of the road. It has lost Dutch oven mine stenciled on it. Isn't that the way in the opposite? Isn't that in the way in... Isn't that way in the opposite corner of the territory? That is pretty lost. Open it up. You pry off the lid, help yourself to the contents. Can of kerosene, dynamite, can of oil. Cup of goose, cup of Chris. Hello, Roy. Howdy, Nor. You recover that jar of jelly beans by any chance? Sure did. Well, I'll be. Thank you kindly, Nor. I won't ask for details, but I hope they were sufficiently grisly. Now the second jar of jelly beans... Oh, God. Of course there's a second jar. The second jar of jelly beans was stolen by a pastel of them weird goblin fellas. Couldn't understand a word they were saying, but they were very insistent. Which way did they go? Northwest, towards that huge old cactus folks call Old Granddad. Here, I'll mark it on your map, but you can't miss it. Well, I had missed it up to that point, so thank you for helping me. Um, you see what you take to be an oasis in the boiling heat of the region and spur Tim toward it. As you near it, you discover that you've been fooled. It wasn't an oasis at all, but an evil-looking towering black stone cow monolith. Anyone could make that mistake, really. An obsidian ungulate. We should see how much damage our sword does, by the way. 38 to 41. That actually sometimes might be better than, um, than using the pistol. Like against enemies that can't be poisoned, for example. Like this guy. So we could do... 38 to 41, or we could do 19 to 20. If there's no poison, might as well do the 41, right? That sword is pretty good. 50 experience. Susie's become stronger. Let's go. Look at the size of that thing. No kidding. Well, that's the way we go. And then we go inside of it. Wait, wait, wait. There's got to be a lady cactus here. I assume a lady cactus would have a face, but I just want to, like... I want to... Be a hundred percent certain. The guard blocks your path. Hey, hi! No climbing for a humans. I'm here for taking back a jar of jelly beans you goblins stealing. Oh, what? Jelly beans? Little colorful sugar things? Oh, little fruit rocks! Yeah, those. 
Those are for the pile. The what? Anyway, no upstairs for humans. Maybe we can trading. No trading, but you can bribing me. Okay, cool. What are you what you are wanting? A candy bar. A good human candy bar of the bubbles having, you knowing it? I'll see what I can do. Um, I am just going to fight you. I'm sorry to do this, but you know, I'm not really is the thing. So, if you don't mind, I'll just uh do a little of this. It's so weird that I feel underpowered because I'm not killing all of these enemies in one hit. It's like I, I've short-circuited my own brain's idea of how much damage is, like, an adequate amount of damage. These guys have wicked muscle, though, so that explains it. Uh, and, and Moxie, I guess, but... We also could use our experience to level up a little. We got Goblin Stew, Goblin Stew, and 50 experience, so... You know, 517 experience not spent yet. Our muscle is even higher than our moxie now. Let's uh, change that. Put all those points into moxie. So we can start to crush enemies more easily. Thanks, Adobe Creative Cloud. There's another goblin here. Hello, no climbing for a human's too bad. Talk. Can I bribe you to letting me climbing? <laughs> okay. What you are wanting? Cactus syrup. A delicious vein is being in the other room, but had losing my tap. If you were a tap, would you be in this pile of junk? To heck with a tap. Can we just walk over to it? There's a gash in the wall of the cactus here revealing a vein of sticky purple goo. Um, I don't know if I can get to 40 muscle or 40 moxie. So I think I'm just gonna fight you? Sorry. Can I, excuse me. The thing is I'd like to fight you potions you can use in a day. Give me a second here. Potion seller. I need to raise my moxie. That's by one. Meat drop bonus. Clove drops. Melee damage. Sugar gums. Range damage. Depressed rancher. Melee damage by seven. Putrid cow bile. So is it mysticality or muscle and moxie? Mysticality and moxie. So we need moxie. So let's drink some potions. We got a ton of spleen capacity. Uh, I hate to do it, but cow's blood, please. Oh, no, they won't let us. Okay, sarsaparilla. Moxie by three. Moxie by three. Mysticality by three. I don't think we have enough to make it happen unless... What about these? No, these are used in combat. Okay, um, well, we're kind of at a loss here then, unless we can fight this guy. We should have just fought him, dude. If you were a tap, where would you be in this pile of junk? Let's check our food for a second. We, I, I'm, I've got faith in us. So if we look at food, goblin stew increases your muscle by 10 but reduces mysticality. Okay, jelly desk go increases moxie. So we can get Moxie up by three. We can get a lot of Moxie if we were to uh, if we were to sleep and then eat a bunch. Oh, I mean, even just this, the Menudo Geodes take us pretty much all the way there. So I'm actually gonna go back to our house here in Dirt Water. We can accomplish some stuff on the way as well. It's a long trip though, I won't deny that. But we need to we need to sleep to adjust our stats, basically. Um and maybe that'll cure the <laughs> cure the bug as well. You go to sleep, you dream that you're painting a self-portrait while fleeing from a bag of sticks. After that, you meet someone who looks exactly like a giant squid, but isn't, you jolt awake in a panic. You wake up hungry, sober, etc. etc. Okay. So Moxie is at 18. We need to get 22 Moxie. Start with food. Menudo geodes, please. Well, we're full on... Oh, you feel an evil presence burning within you. You moo. You got a perk. Cow eruption. Um, you're cow tainted. Curdled bovine energy flows through your every nook and cranny. It seems great. Plus six pistol attack damage. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we need four moxie. That should be easy money. Cheap wine, drink that. 
And then uh, an all stats. Why not? 40 moxie. Sick. All right, we got some stuff to handle in dirt water as well. Like, we we got a dishwasher. Does the dishwasher now work in the kitchen? Nope. Um, there should be the guitar player at the stage now. What's up? Oh, and the washboard guy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, I'm way out of time. What are you guys playing like some 7 8 time signature? Like, what would I want? Sky by Animal Collective. Hey, Bill. No, sorry, I haven't found a cactus lady yet. Um, post office. We did send a postcard, so. We did get a package from Rufus, and we will send him another postcard. And then. Oh, what a surprise. Oh, it's empty! He sent a special air that gave us 200 experience. Hey, thanks a lot, Rufus. That was very nice of you. Thought maybe he was working there. The dishwasher man. Apparently not. Anything over here? Not a lot available. Okay. Well, we now have the uh, the stats required to go back to old granddad. So maybe we've, we've learned all the skills we can learn. Through the shimmering waves of heat, you see a massive pile of bones on the horizon and veer Tim toward it to investigate. It turns out to be an even more massive pile of bones than you initially thought. Let's continue where we were headed. It's right next to us anyway, but, you know, just adding more locations onto the map here. Okay, we got 40 moxie. We should be able to complete this. Hey. Find a tap. Your keen tap dancing skills have allowed you to dance your way directly onto the tap. You also find an empty jar in the pile, which will be handy. There we go. Cactus syrup. Hello, having a syrups? Yes! Hooray! The guard guzzles the entire bottle in a single long draw. It is both fascinating and disgusting. Needing more for proper bribing? Of course you are. Oh, okay, well. Hello, having a syrups? Yes! This time the guard moves away from the ladder, so they have plenty of room to guzzle the syrup. You gain 50 experiences. It's all tapped out. I wanted to get some for myself. Oh, here we go. Hello, hi. I think we should just fight this one, dude. I don't want to deal with these freaking goblins any longer. They all want me to eat 12 meals as soon as I wake up just to complete their quest. We, uh, you know, just by getting buffed, have basically put ourselves in this position where we cannot be killed again. So, uh... Pleased to be poisoned to death now. And 50 experience, goblin short pants, goblin absinthe. Absolutely not. What was going on in here? The table is covered with flasks, beakers, bottles, tubes, and burners, and all the other equipment that makes up a super elaborate alchemy table, including a whole bunch of different colored liquids and powders and stuff. Leave well enough alone. Sorry, buddy. Probably was a quest there. Might have been fun. But your previous ones were annoying. You can't get to the jelly beans because of all the flailing goblin limbs in that pile. You should be able to get in there if you can get rid of about 10 more goblins worth of mass or distract them some other way. Hey guys, those goblins, can I to having them? Oh, what? Our fruit rocks? No, no, not taking our fruit rocks. These being ours, not for you taking. What's your deal for, or what's your plan for dealing with this horror? Let's pop off three. Well, let's talk to them, maybe it'll be fun. But not looking like you're eating them. A jar is still full. What? Eating? Fruit rocks not for eating. Fruit rocks just for looking at. You're just looking at them? Not fitting through floor hole. Can't leaving room. Fruit rocks only entertainment being. Good grief, that's sad. Okay. How about I teaching you something else for entertaining? Something better than fruit rocks looking at. Hmm, okay. Sounding good. I agree. I not certain. What being better than fruit rocks looking at? Poker! You pull out a spare deck of cards and pick a couple handfuls of cactus spines off the floor to use as poker chips and give these goblins a quick poker playing tutorial. Once they get themselves rearranged so they can't see each other's cards, they take to it pretty quickly. You gain 150 experience. We got... Oh, I skipped the dialogue. It's a big bar. It's a big jar of inexperienced apple-flavored jelly beans. Judge Roybean will be thrilled to get it back. All right, sorry I did have to kill that one to make this happen, but, you know, I mean, like... He might have wanted us to solve a puzzle, and that is unacceptable. How you doing on them jelly beans, kid? Got them. Wonderful. 
Good job, kid. Looks like they're all here, too. Well, the goblins didn't eat any? It's a long and weird story. Well, never mind, then. You done a swell job, kid. I only got one more jar of jelly beans missing. They was stole by a gang of damn hippies. Why'd they take them? Heck, who knows what's a hippie thinking? All I know is they took off headed south and a little bit west. To the shroom cave. We have 587 unspent experience. Um, I kind of think we should up our mysticality stat. Even though, of course, like more fan hammer is also good. I'll tell you, well, let's compromise. We'll take a little fan hammer. Each subsequent attack deals five more damage now, which is effectively a six damage up over the course of the whole thing. Versus what it was doing before, which is three. Um, and we'll we'll raise our mysticality. Why raise mysticality? Spell protection, but let's be honest, mostly to pass skill checks. Shroom cave. Off the trail shoulder, you see some ancient petroglyphs carved into a rock. See, I can't translate them. Don't have enough mysticality. Can I not interact with the mushrooms? I cannot. Okay, here we go. Nothing going on down here yet. There's a bunch of Olstads up, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Someone lost a very dirty knapsack. Investigate. It contains some loose bits of granola and some very, very dirty clothes. Oh, and a map! You got an item. The mushroom map. This is a hand-drawn map covered in grubby fingerprints. This map is labeled Shroom Locations and shows a weird convoluted trail leading to a big X. You recognize the X as this very cave. The source of the trail looks like it's right near that weird fort full of dirty weirdos. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. This cultist is totally zonked out. This cultist is muttering and twitching in his sleep. Mushroom crumbs litter the floor around him. Loot his belongings. You grab everything that isn't nailed to him. You got human ashes, a skeleton bone, and a discipline slip. Looks like one of the necromancer's cultists got ridden up. Two more of these and he'll be ritually, ritually eviscerated. Nothing personal, it's just corporate policy. You read over the infraction listed on the slip. Looks like one of those cultists was gathering dangerous mushrooms. Curious, you slip, you stick the slip into your journal. Okay. Necromancer's lair is west of the mountains. You've narrowed the location down to a few possibilities by interpreting data about the ley lines. It was very clever of you, it sure was. You found a discipline slip that mentioned dangerous mushrooms, but you don't really know what to do with the information. If only you knew more about mycology. Okay, so if we could speak to, uh, if we could speak to, oh, we should examine the human ashes as well. If we could speak to the, the, the hippies farming the mushrooms, we might get something. This is a human in the final stage of that whole ashes to ashes thing. Well, part of one at least. Scatter them. Ten experience. S examine them. Scatter them. Ten experience. Maybe we could scatter them in a better location later. Uh, maybe the sun may rise in the east at least. It's settled in a final location. So where was the Fort of Weirdos? Fort of, Fort of Darkness? Out on the open desert. Among the rocks and dunes and underneath the scorching desert sun, you encounter a chef. That probably doesn't sound all that strange comparatively, but hold on while I go into more detail. He has somehow hauled a full-size iron pot stove out into this blistering hot hole and is cooking something on it. Though you can't tell what it is because all you can see in the pan is fire. Rather than being drenched in sweat, he is literally steaming. Furthermore, he's muttering wildly to himself. Hotter gotta be hotter, hot hot gotta cook, cook, cook it right through needs to be hot, hot, hotter. Fight him. For no reason whatsoever. He's a mad chef. He is also dead. But it was close. 50 XP, we got an item, stove door. Dude, someone's gonna require that. And 42 meat, nothing. Oh, dude, this is totally where we wanna be. I still have a cannonball. They might not take too kindly to that, but we'll see. We don't have binoculars, so I don't think we get anything up there. Here we go. This guy seems to be in a daze, looking around uncomprehendingly at the boots and cobbler's tool around him. Hi there. 
There's some pretty cool boots you've made. Are they for sale? Huh? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I'd like to sell them to you, but they are mine. You didn't make them? It's funny how everyone assumes that, but no, these were all made by elves. Elves? Yeah, man, like, little elf guys. They're hard to see, like, just out of the corner of your eye, you know, but I'll be just kind of standing there and just kind of... And then I'm like, oh, hey, got another pair of boots in my hands. Guess the elves made some more boots. Hmm. I haven't made a pair of boots myself in, I don't know, like a year? Years? Something. These elves keep making them, though. I don't know why. Weird. You seen any jelly beans? Jelly beans? Weird. No, I haven't seen anything like that. Ask the elves, maybe. I'll give that a shot. You should open up a boot store. Huh? A store to sell your boots in. They're not mine, though. They're right, right, the elves. But the elves can't be making them just for fun, right? I think they're making them so you can sell them. Oh, huh, yeah, that makes sense. There's a town called Dirtwater. You could open a really nice shop there. Huh, that's uh, a pretty long trip. <laughs> But, like, it'd be dangerous. I'd be worried the elves wouldn't make it, you know? Well, I'll let you know if I think of something. So we can get him to move to dirt water, I assume, and save the town. This young lady is dressed in fancy, expensive traveling clothes, though hardware has made them dirty and ragged. Also, her pupils are about the size of teacups. Wow, hi. A new face. My name's, um... One second. Irene. She giggles. Everyone here just calls me mushrooms, so I forget sometimes. Howdy, Irene. I'm Nora. What's your story? Oh, not much to tell. I was hitchhiking to Frisco a few months back, but I stopped here and never got around to continuing, you know? We're like a big happy family here. Everyone's so nice and appreciative of how I know so much about mushrooms. Mushrooms? Uh-huh. They're good for all kinds of things, if you know which ones to pick. If you want, I can sell you a few of my favorites. I have a spare pair of mushroom pliers, too, if you want to pick your own. Would you like to buy a mushroom? Or a pair of mushroom pliers? Um, first off, you seen any jelly beans? I, uh, yeah, I had some jelly beans recently. I don't quite remember, though. Oh, they were in my lounge! Where's your lounge? I don't quite remember. It's only there part of the time anyway. What? <laughs> I don't know. Would you like to buy a mushroom? No, thanks. Um, I mean, I do, but what I'm actually going to do is... Get the... Oh, we need two levels of dickerin. We're not even close. All right, we'll wait on that for a second. We need to talk to Mushroom Lady about the journal. What is going on in here? Give me bones. Hi, I'm Nor. Salutations, Nor. They call me the talking dude because of my extensive knowledge of the principles of philosophy and the arguments and conundrums surrounding its various aspects and interpretations. I bet that's not why they call you that. Can I interest you in a discussion of the particulars of curtsy and philosophy, Nor? Um, sure, why not? The talking dude begins and you immediately tune out. Blah, blah, which is of course a consequence of blah, blah, allegory of the cave. Uh-huh. Blah, 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 the meaning of meaning, blah, the meaning of meaning, blah, blah, blah. You keep him talking with the subtle list of body language. Blah, 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 a priori, blah, I see. Blah, in the writings of Leibniz, blah, blah, blah. Your posture alone is enough to keep him talking. Blah, 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 but from an epistemological standpoint, blah, 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 I see. Blah, 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 which is, of course, a consequence of blah, blah, blah. Narrow your eyes. So I think he'll just go forever. So we're just going to walk away and then restart the dialogue. You see any jelly beans? Well, first, we must take care to define our terms. What does it mean to see jelly beans? And what if what I see as jelly beans are different than what you see as... Cut the crap before I cut it for you. <laughs> no, I have not. But I do know that Irene, the newest, and dare I say the most delightful of our little clan, is particularly fond of them. You might ask her. Do you know where Irene's lounge is? I have been there, but for some inexplicable reason, I was never invited to return. I would self-actualize by returning on my own, but I don't quite remember where it was, and Todd will not tell me. It is quite frustrating. Alright, see you later, weirdo. Hi, I'm Nor. Teeth, teeth, clavicle, femur, teeth. Wow, okay. Um, give her some... Bones? 
You hand her an armload of bones and she starts mechanically picking through them, selecting some and discarding others based on criteria you can't discern. Eventually, having chosen the best two from the pile, she secures them together with wires and screws and hands you something that basically looks like a sword. Neat, thanks! Um, you have some skull chips? You hand her some bone chips and she stops muttering. Her eyes seem to focus a little and she takes some glue out of her toolbox and presses the chips into a ring. You got an item, bone chip ring. As soon as, soon as she gives the bones, as soon as she gives the ring to you, though, she's back to her muttering. Alright, well, um... We don't have ten gold teeth, unfortunately. Have you seen any jelly beans? Teeth, jawbone, jawbone, teeth, teeth. I see. Do you know anything about a lounge? Teeth, 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 lumbar vertebra. Okay, um, goodbye. Weirdo. Uh, bone chip ring. Have more random encounters, encounters with skeletons. We don't care about that, but hey, it's always nice to get new uh, options here. Hmm. Okay. Hello. Ah, hello. Yes. Hmm. I'm Todd. Nor, pleased to meet you. So, what do you do around here, Todd? I'm a chemist. I've been researching the properties of some of the local mushrooms. Properties like what? Like how they get you totally wrecked. <laughs> okay, I know exactly how I'm doing this guy's voice. I'm kidding. They actually have, like, a lot of interesting properties that could be a real boon to medicine. They may even hold a solution to many psychological disorders. Oh, well, that is pretty interesting. The fact that they also get you absolutely smashed is just a happy side effect. Woo! I see. If you have any Lactarius Dirta Hippica mushrooms, I can refine them into a more potent potable, i.e. a potion. Hehe. <laughs> you see any jelly beans? No! I'm not interested in jelly beans unless they're the kind of jelly beans that get you completely blasted. I don't think that's a real thing. No, it is! I heard they got them in Frisco. That doesn't seem safe, you know, for kids. Okay, and then the potion. Do you know where Irene's lounge is? Oh yeah, I do. Don't uh, don't tell the talking dude if you don't mind, but it's in that cave where we get all of our mushrooms. Hmm, I didn't see any lounge there. It's, uh, you gotta be, uh, he jerks his thumb at the apparatus behind him and winks at you. If you have any Lactarius Dirta Hippica mushrooms, I can refine them into a more potent potable, i.e. a potion. Okay, I see. See where you're getting at here. This woman is rocking back and forth, making frip, 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 as she rapidly flaps her lips with her fingers. Hi, frip, frip. Hand her a jaw harp. What's this? It's a kind of musical instrument. You bite the narrow part and then, well, basically just do what you've been doing. She gives it a few experimental twangs and boings and then knocks out a sweet riff. Wow, this thing is like a revelation. Thanks. I feel like maybe I should take this show on the road. Maybe try the Jewel Saloon in Dirtwater. Heck yeah, dude. Dirtwater's getting stacked. This tall, muscular, bald man is leading his students in an aerobic workout routine. His voice is powerful yet disconcertingly soft as he counts off. One and two and three and four. Excuse me, what's going on here? Exercise! You must strengthen the body. If the body is weak, the mind cannot be strong. These two are one. Who are you? I'm Kurtz. My methods will usher in a new age of power and will. Can I exercise with you? You do not have the proper attire. Before muscle comes skin, before skin comes clothing. You look around, and sure enough, everybody's wearing the same striped pants and weird fuzzy headband. Oh, well, dude, check this out. Your boy's been paying attention. Kurt's fit headband. We're already wearing the Kurt's fit pants. Can I exercise with you? Let's go. I gotta let them finish their routine, basically. Let's go! Power surges you, you've unlocked true potential. Curtsy and physique. Plus 10 muscle? That's no joke. Plus the song is banging, man. Okay. Sloppy top hat. And we are, we're already wearing the pants. Guns. Can't crack it. Military supplies. Artillery saber. Plus six pistol attack damage. Well, we should probably equip it. The sword is better, but this is better at making our... Um... Oh, the last entry says she was buried in plot 420 in the military cemetery up north. Pry it open. Pry it open. Cannon loading for idiots! Read it. This book is so rudimentary that it's insulting your, to your intelligence even though you almost you know almost nothing about loading cannons. Yo, but now we can load cannons. Now we know where to go. Okay, before we finish this episode, which has gone on very slightly longer, um, 
Of course it's 420. The already intense heat intensifies. Sweat stings your eyes, and while it's stinging them, you fail to notice that you've ridden in right in the middle of a herd of pyro boves. Dude, you guys actually are done. 84, 77, 77, 91. Um, you're all dead. You just don't know it yet. So first... It's only gonna do 15 extra... Well... Get highly dusted. And then you stun one. I mean, this is four enemies. It's not really a joke, but... Oh, we, we need to leave. We could go down here. In fact, I think we will go down here. What's your HP? 35. Healing yourself for 10 does not end your turn, but we absolutely have to kill another one then. And even then, one will go down. What if we just throw, like, some wicked poison? I think this is where we use all of our consumables. You still have 32 left, huh? I don't really need to light them on fire. I think we'll just use our consumable bullets and finish this off, like, pretty easily. They're surprisingly, like, not immune to fire. Oh, I didn't mean to shoot you with that. And then we'll just smack you. And then do this. So we used a lot of consumables there, but we finished the job, at least. 50 experience, roasted cow tongue. Brass Bull Ring, Infernal Soul Fragment, Cal Fangs, and Susie gets a little stronger, presumably. Let's go back to Fort Memoriam. No! Let's go back to Military Cemetery. You encounter a goblin chef out harvesting produce, by which I mean knocking lumps off a cactus. It gives you some real side eye when it sees you. Hey, you a human, to keeping away from these lumps that are mine, or maybe I am to cooking you instead. What? You goblins don't people to eating, do you? Ah, no, gross. I did saying that to scare you away. Did you scared? Jeez, a little. Nice. So what's cooking? Lumps. All right, let's trick them out of their lumps. Wait, no, not these lumps. Why not these lumps? Poison lumps these are. I am cooking for many times, knowing very well which lumps are poison. Looking here, you receive an unexpected lecture on which lumps are and are not poisonous. You gain 20 experience. Right, fine, fine by me. Burial plots. Visit a plot. I would like to visit plot 69 first. You approach the grave. It reads, First Lieutenant Seth, Seth Whitney Jr., 69th Innuendo Division. I get it. Dig it up. Eh, yeah, we got something. Visit another plot. 420. Of course, mycology, your ecology. Plot 420 is completely overgrown with mushrooms. You root around in the loose shroomage and find a book. Coincidentally, it's a book about mushrooms. Can't think of any other funny numbers right now. There's only two. Yes, we will read the mushroom book. We got Pass and Fair Mycologist. After you finish reading the book, you absently absentmindedly misplace it while well, musing about mushrooms. Dang it. So I think we probably have to go... Uh, Pick mushrooms, probably with the mushroom pliers that we have to buy from the hippie in the fort. But for now, that's going to end the episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Peep West of Loathing, available on Steam. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, partner.